Audiobook Academy Biography Presents Robert Owen Known as one of the most influential early 19th century supporters of utopian socialism, Robert Owen was a Welsh industrialist turned reformer who was born on May 14, 1771, and died on November 17, 1858 in Newtown, Montgomeryshire. With its social and industrial welfare programs, his new Lanark Mills in Lanarkshire, Scotland became a destination for political leaders, social reformers and monarchy. Many experimental utopian villages, including one in New Harmony, Indiana, U.S., were also supported by him. Early years. Robert and Anne Owen, the postmaster and postmistress of Newtown, had seven children, with Owen being the second youngest. For the first ten years of his life, he was educated in the local schools and apprenticed to a tailor. Owen spent a lot of time in the library of his employer, which had a nice collection of books. In his early years of reading about religious debates, he came to the conclusion that all religions had serious problems. By the age of 19, he had risen to the position of superintendent of a large Manchester cotton mill, which he quickly turned into one of the best in the country. By using American Sea Island cotton, a fine fiber that has a very long staple, Owen improved the quality of cotton spun in Britain. Owen convinced his colleagues to buy the new Lanark mills in Lanarkshire when he became manager and a partner in the Manchester firm. New Lanark there were 2,000 people in New Lanark at the time, but of them, 500 were youngsters from the city's poor houses and charities. Children had been adequately cared for by the last owner, but they had to endure inhumane living conditions, crime and vice flourished in these situations of despair, education and hygiene were neglected, and housing was unlivable. It was Owen's personal influence that influenced the people to adopt a more orderly and thrifty lifestyle. At the expense of the items, he created a store and rigorously regulated the sale of alcoholic beverages there. Among his biggest accomplishments was his dedication to the education of the young. At the new Lanark Mills, he opened the first infant school in Great Britain and personally supervised it. Character development was a priority in these institutions, which avoided traditional tactics like corporal punishment in favor of more creative ones like music and dance. Owen was first viewed as an outsider but the people came to trust him after he decided to pay payments to the mill workers during an embargo against the United States during the War of 1812, even though the mills were shut down for four months. Commercially, the mills continued to prosper under Owen's leadership, but some of his projects came at a high cost, and this angered his business partners. Owen formed a new enterprise in 1813 after becoming dissatisfied with the limits placed on him by his partners, who placed an emphasis on profit rather than the well-being of the company. Their shareholders, happy with a 5% return on their investment and eager to provide him more freedom in his philanthropy, purchased the old company. Jeremy Bentham, a legal reformer and utilitarian philosopher, and William Allen, a Quaker, were stockholders in the new company. Social Reform Philosophy A New View of Society, or Essays on the Principle of Human Character Formation, published two of Owen's essays in 1813, in which he laid down the foundations for his educational charity. It wasn't until he'd lost all faith in the current kinds of religion that he came up with an altogether new and original belief system. Human character is developed by circumstances over which individuals have little control, according to Owen's worldview. As a result, no one can be praised or criticized for being a person. That led him to believe that early exposure to positive influences was critical for shaping people's personalities in the long run. An important theme running through all of Owen's educational and social reform efforts was the importance of preventing negative influences from entering the lives of children at a young age. As time went on, Owen's work in New Lanark would become significant not just for Scotland, but also for Europe. Owen's accomplishments were universally praised by everyone who stopped over. His efforts were clearly fruitful. As a result, the business was a commercial success and the children were viewed as graceful and unrestrained, they also grew up in a state of good health and abundance. To remove cotton import levies in 1815, Owen organized an industrial gathering of manufacturers and successfully persuaded them to support his cause. Despite this, his plan to limit the number of hours children might work in the mills was rejected. It was a failure, and by 1817 his efforts as a practical reformer had given way to the still vital concepts that would make him the forerunner of socialism and the cooperative movement. Humans and machines compete for human labor and Owen thought that the only viable answer was for people and machines to work together in subordinate machinery. Based on these ideas, he came up with a plan to help the poor. Unemployed people should be housed in villages of unity and collaboration, according to Owen. It is estimated that each town would have around 1,200 residents, all living together in a big structure erected in the shape of a square, with a public kitchen and messrooms. There would be a private apartment for each family, 
as well as full custody of their children until they were three years old. After that, the community would raise them. At mealtimes and other appropriate times, parents would be able to see their children. Officials, parishes, counties, or the state, according to Owen, might form these kinds of communities, and they would be overseen by appropriately qualified individuals in each instance. Collectively, both the effort and the reward would be shared. The hamlet of New Lanark had served as a model for the planned community size, and on quickly campaigned for the idea to be expanded to include societal reorganization as a whole. In his concept, he wanted to build self-contained, predominantly agricultural villages of between 500 and 3,000 people equipped with the most advanced machinery. It became necessary to construct federatively united circles of tens to hundreds of thousands as the number of communities grew, until the world was embraced in a shared interest. New Harmony Owen's suggestions for curing poverty were well received until he announced his antipathy to religion as an impediment. This conduct alienated some of Owen's most ardent fans, who thought he had become a pariah among society's elite. In 1825, he purchased 30,000 acres of property in Indiana from a religious society and renamed it New Harmony in order to implement his concept for self-contained communities. In the beginning, under Owen's practical guidance, life in the community was calm and happy. However, Differences of opinion concerning government and religion soon arose, though history agrees that a noble spirit prevailed despite the dissent. In 1828, Owen retired from society after losing 40,000 pounds, or 80% of his fortune, in the community. Owen participated in three more major Owenite community trials in the United Kingdom, Queenwood, Hampshire, 1839-45, Orbiston, near Glasgow, Lanarkshire, 1826-27, and Ralahini, County Cork. 1831-33. Quinwood was Owen's home for three years throughout these experiments. He was not a member of either of the other two groups. Leadership of the labor movement in the United States. Around 1820, Owen stated that reform was not enough and that a social revolution was necessary. Between 1820 and 1830, a number of groups and newspapers were established to promote his thoughts on community, which attracted younger workers who had grown up in factories. On his return to England from New Harmony, Owen found himself considered their leader because to labor unionism and the rise of the working class's perspective. Owenism sparked the emergence of self-governing workshops within labor unions. The National Equitable Labor Exchange was established in 1832 as a market for the products of these shops, based on the premise that labor is the foundation of all wealth. Unions' phenomenal expansion made it seem plausible that all industries could be organized by these groups. Owen and his supporters waged a relentless propaganda campaign across the country and as a result, the National Operative Builders Union was transformed into a guild and the Grand National Consolidated Trades Union was founded, 1834. After a few months, despite strong support from labor unions, the campaign was stymied by strong opposition from employers and harsh government and judicial penalties. First popularized at this time in the 1920s, socialism impacted unionism for two generations before returning to prominence. Throughout these years, Owen's ideas about community remained influential, and they ultimately served as the foundation for the global cooperative movement of consumers. Owen spent the rest of his life teaching his ideas on education, morality, rationality, and marriage reform after 1834. He became a spiritualist when he was 82 years old. The Life of Robert Owen, Owen's Autobiography, was published in two volumes in 1857 and 1858. Reprinted 1971. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.